The Secrets of Stargate is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. You're listening to The Secrets of Stargate, Episode 62. Janet West Jackson has identified the seventh symbol. All right, here we go. We are about to try to make a connection. All we gotta do is bust out of here, commandeer the ship, and fly on home. Indeed. You say that a lot. I know that this could be dangerous. But this is our job, right? It's what we signed on to do. It was never about going home. It's about getting us to where we're going. Hi, I'm Jack Berizzini, and you're listening to The Secrets of Stargate, where I talk about the hidden meanings and deeper layers found the Stargate movies, TV series, and more. And joining me today are Father Corey Stika. Hi, Father. Howdy, Jack. And Lisa Jones. Hi, Lisa. Hey, Jack. And Victor Lambs. Hey, Victor. Hi, Jack. Today we are discussing the 20th episode of Season 3, Maternal Instinct. Braytac and Moak come through the Stargate. Moak is badly wounded and soon dies. Braytac tells the team that Apophis has attacked Chulak and searched for the Harsisis. The team is able to locate Keb by doing a compare between two databases on the gate addresses. They travel to Keb where they find an ancient temple and meet a Tibetan monk who speaks in riddles. The monk tells Daniel of Oma de Sala, the spirit of Mother Nature who controls all things. Daniel learns of her powers by getting in touch with himself and soon starts demonstrating powers of telekinesis. Apophis' gold army attacks the temple, but Daniel is able to meet Oma de Sala face to face and learns that she is an ascended ancient being who is watching over the child. After frying all the gold, Oma de Sala takes the Harsis' child with her to the higher realm where he will be safe from the gold. The end. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on this episode, Father? You know, this is one of those that it, it, it seems kind of goofy because you got all the Zen cones in there <clears throat> and, you know, D- Daniel thinking that he's got power over fire and all that. But then, of course, you look at it deeper, and this is actually a fairly important episode for the ongoing plot. Mm-hmm. You know, we actually meet what they later call an ancient, an ascendant ancient with, with uh, Oma, who comes back later. You know, so it actually does advance the plot, although, again, it, it, when you look at it, when I first saw it, I thought, this is the goofiest <laughs> episode, you know. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's almost mocking the idea of Zen zen phrases and so on but you know but it actually does have a lot more to do with it it's 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 enjoyable enough if you just kind of have fun with it but Mm -hmm. yeah what about you lisa you know it's funny most of this episode (coughs) that i remember is all of the scenes with the monk and so watching it from the beginning again i'd forgotten the lead up to going to find Mm kev so i found that um, I really, I really like Bray Tech. So I really liked and enjoyed all of that lead up with him again. And I agree with Father Corey. This is, there's just so much more to come. It's an episode that opens the doors to so much more. And, uh, and then there's just so many quotables that you just, you have to love it. <laughs> I mean, yes. Talk about yeah. the, the candle is lit and the meal was prepared a long time ago. I mean, that's something we say in my house. So it's just kind of funny that, uh, all the little things that come out of this episode. Nice. What about you, Victor? Yeah, I, I like this episode uh, quite a bit. It's kind of the quintessential Robert Cooper episode where it advances the mythology of the show because we meet our first ancient. Um, you know, there's a lot of really good funny moments in it as well. We get Braytech, we get a lot of Jaffa. There's some some battle sequences um, there's a lot going on, uh, but still a really good story. And, and like I said, it kind of advances the, the, the mythos of the, of the show quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They really managed to pack a lot into this episode. You get like three different plot lines going, which is cool to see. But yeah. We get a uh, Apophis who just refuses to die as, uh, <laughs> Jack says at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. This is the second time, back. <laughs> second time Braytax got to tell them that Apophis is still alive. Yeah. 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 Didn't Jack say something like, you know, someone needs to teach him how to die. And it's like, yeah. well, SG-1 <laughs> has been trying. <Right>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so 
Apophis, wait, we, we were keeping a running tally, right? Apophis, how many? SG1, how many? So I think Apophis just got another, you know, tally in his corner there. Coming back yeah. one yeah. more time. He didn't find the Harcesis, though, so. Eh. And in the end, uh, a number of his troops kind of got wiped out, so. A large number of his yeah, troops. Yeah, 2,000 <laughs> or so. Yeah. But that, that they did like a... SG1 doesn't get the point for that one. Almost no. Yeah, nope. they were they were just there. <laughs> yeah. And uh I like how the the effect they used at the end when all the uh gold are killed is like the reminded me of in um Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm. Yep. It's just like mm -hmm. the yeah. going through each one of them. Yep, exactly. So that was cool. That's a good point. Yeah, I wanted to know more about uh like why there's a Buddhist temple on this planet and how long has this guy been here? Like is he <laughs> Is he really old? Is he like, does, is it like a lineage that's passed down? Like you don't really learn anything about the monk and then he ascends at the end. And Yep. Yep. Yeah. I got the impression he was like in his 20s or 30s or something and probably came from like a planet of monks or something and was yeah. kind of assigned there as a caretaker. And then with the understanding that like, you know, if you die on the job, you get to ascend, <laughs> I think is the deal. <laughs> <laughs> to perk benefit of yeah. the job. <laughs> Yeah, to make another Indiana Jones reference, he he serves the same function as the uh, the knight guarding mm -hmm. the Holy Grail. Yep. He just waits there for people to come. Yeah, exactly. unless he was taking care of the baby too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why he had to keep ducking out because after the priestess was was killed, and there's a lot of like pretty good sleuthing. I mean, for for Stargate, oh. you know, in yeah. the beginning, you know, like where it's like, well, how can we determine where Keb is? Well. Uh, there's an ancient Jaffa legend that says this, but wait, there's another ancient Jaffa legend that says that. And so let's yep. run it through the computer and see what happens. And then when they are uh, tracking, you know, uh, the Jaffa and they find the priestess and we get to see Braytek doing his tracking and his, <laughs> here's what happened, his, yeah. his forensic crime scene analysis. Um, yeah. You know, and yeah. She's lighter and wears these sandals and had cornflakes for breakfast. And, yeah. you know, <laughs> her hands are not bound. You know, she was carrying yeah. the child because they shot low. They didn't want to hurt the child. So there's a lot of yeah. like um, really good Bray Tech moments in this. And uh, it, it starts off, you think, oh, wow, we're in for like a really good, you know, Bray Tech episode. We do get that. We do get a lot of really good Bray mm -hmm. Tech moments. I think my favorite is, is when um, in order to step into the circle, they need to take off their shoes. And, you know, of course, Daniel takes off his shoes, but even Bray Tech, who, you know, Keb represents, you know, the end of his life as a Jaffa. When we first see Braytek in this, he's tired, he's washed up, he's uh, yearning for death. There's there's no uh, future for him because his latest uh, apprentice has been killed. And mm -hmm. uh, so that's his motivation for going there. And so he's ready to to just jump on board the Ascension train. And you see him actually take his boots off as well. And I thought that was a nice touch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we found yeah, out that he he's gets... pretty deep. I mean, spiritually he was he was ready to talk to the monk and really figure out what he needed yep. to do yeah until he learned he had to uh get rid of the gold so yeah yep. and it, it helped he clarify ready yet, things right i'm not quite ready yeah. to leave maybe i have he said what is it i feel like a, a jaffa of 80 yeah a young man of yeah. 80 Two years yeah. left in him <laughs> So speaking of uh, Braytac's uh, young apprentice who really didn't say much in this episode because he <laughs> died, uh, Moak was played by Aaron Douglas. I thought I recognized him. It was Aaron Douglas who played Chief Carroll on Battlestar Galactica, the reboot Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. I would, I would love to say that I was like, oh, my gosh, that's Tyrrell. No, my husband did. And I'm like, no, it's not. And I was wrong. He was right. <laughs> uh, and he's, he's a little bit younger than he yeah. was when he was playing yeah. Chief Terrell. Yeah, so I had to. I looked at him and goes, he looks really familiar. And I looked. Him, oh, yeah, Aaron Douglas. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Stargate tends to feature act like actors that you recognize, but before they get like really jacked from working out and stuff. And so, like you see them in <laughs> exactly. there, and they're like alpha form and <laughs> and you know, Stargate. Yeah. yeah, like Michael Shanks, you know. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> and and of course, was playing a, I mean, Aaron Douglas is playing a Jaffa. Aren't they all supposed to be you know muscular and buff? Come on. I think I think it's the He's a baby job. Yeah, He's the armor adds <laughs> yeah. forty pounds. <laughs> but 
<laughs> and and another uh, guest star, Major Coburn, the leader of SG2. A lot of twos in this episode. When Braytech comes in, it's mm -hmm. he's using GDO code two, and then they send SG2 to the mm -hmm. planet. Um, I don't think there's any significance to that, but uh, Steve uh, Bacic, who is, uh, you know, Telemachus and Geharis Rade on Andromeda um, guest stars, and he shows up all throughout these uh, Vancouver sci-fi shows, and um, it's always good to see him because he's a very good actor. I... Apparently he plays uh, a couple different characters in the show, too. Mm -hmm. I only know him from Hallmark, so... Oh yeah, <laughs> he, he's been in a lot of Hallmark shows. <laughs> oh, is he really? <laughs> oh yeah, he's working. Speak, speaking of Vancouver casting, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I'm picking up that there seems to be like a '90s TV sci-fi sci to Hallmark pipeline going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, because I think the sci-fi in Vancouver kind of it was like real big in the '90s, and then as it started going down, Hallmark started going up, and they're all like, "Hey, I'm still working." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the sci-fi, well, like Star Trek, the new Star Treks are all filmed in Toronto now instead of Vancouver. Oh, okay. Yeah. And there's, you know, except uh, Picard had some in Los, Los Angeles, but, you know, on-site type footage. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, a lot of, lot of it's now in Toronto. So it's kind of moved to different parts of the, the, the country. So now Vancouver's got to fill it in somewhere. Well, Hallmark mm -hmm. shows up, and we'll give, you give us the same show with different characters <laughs> in different locations. Done. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't <laughs> say just Hallmark, Netflix too because there's a bunch yep. of netflix originals mm. who are filmed up there like virgin river which he was in so mm. yep i know <laughs> yeah i think the x files yeah i think they moved to vancouver in their later seasons i think they're i think it's they kind of well, started all around. this yeah 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 but you notice like there's a very distinct like shift in the visual look of the show when they moved i think it was from vancouver to los angeles or one way or the other mm -hmm. But it was mm. funny to see that change. <clears throat> but yeah, so we get a uh, so uh, the continuation of the Harcesis uh, storyline here, and I feel kind of bad for the kid because does he even have a name? Like he's just the Harcesis kid. Not yet. Harcesis, that's his name. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't really talk yet. So he's, are they worried about like reactive attachment disorder with him just being taken care of by this floating glowing light? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, kids have mobiles and stuff. They seem to like it. You know, maybe they just think, just, I don't know, just a mobile just spinning over the, yeah. I was just thinking, man, they got a baby in a happy mood, just cooing oh, yeah. all the time. I mean, just that baby was so happy. I thought, wow, maybe the, that's what you get for being in cab, right? Yeah. Happy baby. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, I, I really like this one, and I do like, um, you know, playing kind of a, not not exactly a, a cliche. Terry Chen as uh, it just says monk, in the in the credits here, um, mm -hmm. but uh, someone who speaks largely in Zen koans, which are, you know, uh, basically challenges from a teacher to a student to kind of challenge whether or not a student is understanding, um, you know, everything that they need to understand and. And it's actually, in that respect, it's, you know, true to the, that intended purpose because he is challenging Daniel to see if he understands that ultimately he can't take care of the, the baby and it's safer in the hands of this, you know, energy being. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, definitely. I do like the way that that's, that's all played where Daniel realizes that this is the best place for the kid to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My and favorite then, is where Daniel gets a little arrogant conceited and little you're like oh not I'm, daniel what i'm so amazing <laughs> look at me like an hour with a monk and i can do all the things with my mind <laughs> including point <laughs> violate all the laws of gun safety yeah. by pointing jack's gun right in his face yeah like <laughs> daniel's got that arrogant streak where I think he has an inferiority complex next to the rest of the team because he's the one civilian guy. And so whenever he gets any little bit of power, it really goes to his head. It does. I've seen this multiple times and it was, mm -hmm. it was nice to see the ancient actually kind of using that against him by making him think that he was doing all this amazing stuff when he really wasn't. And I like how they kind of, it was almost like lampshading that thing you see in science fiction or fantasy TV shows where you have this character who's never encountered this, power before and then they spend like an hour with it and then they master it yeah 
So it was mm. nice to see that that was all a ruse. Well, the, the sci-fi uh, version of that is they encounter a strange ship with, you know, from an alien species and they beam over and can immediately figure out every system on the ship, despite yeah. the mm-hmm. fact that all the consoles are in a different language and all the parts are going to look different because they were built by a different species. But they can figure out every system on the ship without any trouble. Right. <laughs> yeah. Everything in the universe uses uh, hex wrenches, so we're good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I did want a little bit of a smackdown, though. Like, he was so haughty, to, especially yeah. to Carter. Like, how could you not believe me that I can do all the things? And, and she's like, well, there might be technology. I might need to like, t- take a look around. And he's like, oh, I can't believe it. And I just, you know, it's like, I just wanted someone to, like, smack him upside the head yeah. for a minute. And you know, instead, it's like, oh, wait, you were teaching oh, I get it. And here's Oma just smiling at him. And he's like, oh, no, great. Yeah. I'm like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, he becomes the least reasonable person there. Right. And I, I kind of hope that they grilled him for that. Yeah. You don't yeah. see that on screen. But I just were really like, there's there. like, because it is so clear, it takes a longer time to realize it. That's <laughs> what they're just like. <laughs> or just like bring a light yeah. up to his face. And start yeah. It's like. Yeah. Oh, did you do that? Did you do that? Yeah. But if you think this is going to tamp down any of his arrogance and like, I'm so amazing oh, no. and no, oh, it's, it just gets worse. <laughs> and then he ascends eventually. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. That, that's fun. I'm sure. That didn't go to his head. No. Nope. Well, <laughs> a, he went to Broadway, Wait, which, right? So yeah. Which time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, Yeah, at this point, just thinking about the way Daniel handles these kind of situations and then the way Jack handles other kinds of situations, the only two people who really deserve to be on the SG-1 team are Teal'c and um, Sam. Yeah. (laughs) Like, they're the two people who are not loose cannons or just arrogant and not really that trustworthy. Yeah, and they follow direction pretty well for the most part. I mean, yeah, but they also didn't have a heck of a lot to do in this episode. This was pretty no. much a no. Daniel, Jack, Ray Tack episode, really. Yeah. And we, we do get some good scenes between Daniel and Jack, too, where, mm-hmm. you know, Jack is giving Daniel some leeway to figure out what's going on, but his patience is not, you know, endless. Um, even after the little, uh, you know, gun stunt there, um, you know, where <laughs> I got a kick out of it, Daniel, the scene where Dan- uh, Daniel explains that he's kind of a caretaker and, uh, or a custodian and, and Jack goes, Oh, you mean a janitor? He's like more of a guide. And he's like an usher. I thought that was pretty, uh, <laughs> yeah. that was pretty good. But then he eventually pulls rank and says, you know, it's like, I haven't done anything. You know, you're confused because I, I could shut this all down. I just haven't yet because, you know, for you, basically I'm giving you some leeway here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then of course, after he's kind of, been a jerk to everyone he asked them at the very end when the gold are there and have surrounded them and have all their weapons pointed at them he asked them to trust him and then drop their weapons yeah 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 it was, an, it was another nice moment drop your weapons and jack turns to the gold and says you heard the man and daniel says no you you drop your weapons <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but gotta, get, gotta give him like a hidden code or, or something you know that trust me like they're about to you know like She's going to come get them. It's fine. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. After the whole sh- pointing the gun into his own face, Jack's face, I'm not sure. I don't know. Jack should have been a little more questioning. Yeah. yeah. Well, Jack could have looked at the lead, uh, Jaffa, and said, hey, can you just take care of him for us and then we'll talk? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. I was definitely getting Gary Mitchell vibes from uh, Daniel throughout this episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very much so. God complex going right to his head. <laughs> we have the... Yeah, I like it. Oh, go ahead. Oh, we just... I was going to mention, this is a very small point, but my favorite piece of, like, uh, Earth technology that shows up in this episode, and, and it, I had thought it shows up way more in Stargate than it actually does now that we're re-watching it here, but the Claymore Mines, like, mm-hmm. I just assumed that they, like, did that in every episode just because when I watched it, they just kept popping up, but uh, we do get uh, we do get some of the Claymore Mines, uh which you, you may remember from uh, Parks and Recreation. Uh, Ron Swanson had one on his desk. 
you know, with the uh, yeah. face towards enemy type things. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I know a couple of people who have those. They're deactivated ones, obviously, as far as I know. <laughs> oh, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> like his desk props. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just hope when you're sitting at their desk yeah. that they don't pull a little hand controller out of their, <laughs> their drawer. Yeah. Oh, let me take care of that for you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, there are days where, you know. Um, uh, so, yeah, they have the whole thing in here where they uh, kind of surmise that the Buddhist religion came from, like, an alien planet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I always find it interesting when they do that with, like, with Earth religions or Earth beliefs and science fiction shows. Because I feel like it kind of, I'm not a fan of it because it kind of just cheapens someone's belief like i wouldn't want someone to do that with christianity and so i, I kind of don't like it when they do that with sort of any like earth-based belief but they didn't it didn't seem like it was just kind of well that's kind of here so run of the mill for sg1 because all the ancient right. religions are all because of the Gwauld or the asgard so that's true would it would it really matter i mean because here is everywhere you are <laughs> doesn't make me think of the uh the buckaroo bonsai yeah wherever you go there you are yeah yeah <laughs> my favorite i tell hey, my Victor, kids that all the time yeah write, how many of these did you write down uh i could just see you uh, watching this episode like writing furiously like that was a good one Wait. was it what's a good one and and they actually like put no barriers between here and where you are and then he surmises that means take take off your shoes yeah right that so good. that was like a good entry level Cohen, right? So like, do you understand at least a little bit of what we're trying to tell you here? And um, I didn't, I didn't catch the, like the meaning of all of them. I'm sure that if I sat down and thought about it, it would relate to the story in some way, but yeah. I do wonder if any of these are actual uh, Coans. Like I'm not really familiar with how those are structured or anything, but it'd be interesting to look up and compare and see how they actually work based on how they're done here. <laughs> yeah, you can pull up the transcript from yeah. the wiki and start reading through them. <laughs> there is the child in all of us. Yep. Well, that's why I still go to the Lego Island target. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't actually see Apophis. He figures, uh, heavily in this episode but we don't actually get to mm-hmm. see him at all we did have one jaffa still wearing so cars shoulders mm-hmm. yeah oh yeah the lead guy i mean yeah Pappas isn't a miracle worker he can't just like you know replicate a bunch of new uniforms and stuff i mean <laughs> he has to work with what he's given <laughs> or what he's taken i suppose I thought it was, save it for his leaders. No. Yeah. I thought it was a nice reminder that he yeah. kind of had a borrowed army. Oh. I do wonder how hard it was for him to win them all over because they seem cool with it here. Yeah, I think it's like our I, god died, you're there, let's go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you you beat our god, so therefore you're now our god. Yeah. So what did you <laughs> think about Shulak being uh, attacked and how many... I think I know we go back to Chulak, don't we? Later, so yep, mm-hmm. not everyone's wiped out or anything. But I thought that was a really interesting way to start the episode with Chulak's attack. Oh, by the way, Apophis is back, and uh, no, don't go there. We're not fighting there. We're gonna go over here, mm-hmm. and then I don't think yep. we go back there for quite a while. So it's a nice little twist. It was. It was a very uh, a bold thing to do to talk about that, which has been kind of a central planet like, of all these planets. And then you don't even see it. Mm-hmm. So you're, you you kind of don't know how extensive it is. Well, it had to be pretty bad if Moak died. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was no talk about his junior helping him. No. Did you notice that? He rushes in and immediately Frazier's like, we're going to do surgery. And I'm like, what's going on with junior? Like His primta. What's up with his primta? Yeah. yeah. Primta. Yeah. <laughs> nope, it's all Calmel Cara there at the end. It got, it got, got injured. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know more about the Loch Nacor. That's like a really cool way to refer to like a system or a system of systems, the mining like planets mm-hmm. that uh, Osiris, yeah. oh yeah, Osiris like had and stuff, and how they track it down. That's that was that was kind of a cool uh, 
a lot of like really cool science fiction elements in this mm-hmm. as we go along. Well, we learned about you... the color coding in the computer with the uh, yeah. no, yeah, eight coordinates. Well, I always thought it was, you know, green was either ones they knew were good or were going to try, and red was the ones that they that failed. That's what I thought. It's like, oh, no, it's because that came from the other, lo- from the ancients instead of from the gold. It's like, oh, okay. I would have Although, done different color for that, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Although I am kind of surprised they haven't done, like, a compare against these two databases before. I feel like that'd be one of the first things you would do. It, fill in the yeah. Yeah. And they may have done, it just takes a little while. I mean, it does take, with only a finite number of Stargate, like, teams, it does take a while to get through. Yep. That's true. And all of them and and stuff, so I can I can appreciate that. Hmm. Uh, okay, can we, can we talk, it's a spoiler, but, I mean, the series did air 20-something years ago. So, <laughs> so, Jack, close your ears. Um... <laughs> Oma, the Sala here, wipes out mm-hmm. a whole lot of Jaffa, right? <laughs> yeah. But this is her meddling. Yeah. Yes. So when we get her in later seasons where she talks to people, she's not allowed to meddle. But our first entry into her is her killing lots of people. Maybe that's why she's not allowed to meddle? Yeah, that's actually a really good kind of headcanon explanation. It's like... And, and she's... <laughs> We know we know she's kind of a re- or we find out she's kind of a rebel among the the ancients mm-hmm. when they ascended, and so that's why she's more willing to be involved with people because the ancients decided that once they ascended, the rule was they were not allowed to have any in- involvement in the earthly realm at all. Mm-hmm. They just they ascended and they're gone, uh, and she refused to. Mm-hmm. So, um, is it meddling though, or is it defense? Because she was just as willing to strike down SG one if True. they didn't put down their weapons, and she was but she was that, protecting the child. Exactly. But at that point, that would be meddling because if it's just a bunch of mortals killing each other, potato potato. <laughs> well, again, it was it was protecting the child because then again, yeah. you could say even protecting the child would be meddling. Yeah. yeah. But. Yeah, because. Yeah. So that was just my only. That was my thought I was left with because I'd, I'd if, forgotten you know, how we met Oma originally. And then when right. um, I cannot remember the lady's name who plays her last name's Harris. Can't remember who plays her eventually. This lady, mm-hmm. this woman who played her just, I loved the way that they just had her face on the white glowy. Mm-hmm. I just thought that was so cool. And uh, yeah, this is the only time she appears as a space nun. Mm-hmm. Yep. I was gonna say, <laughs> give me wimble. a <laughs> yeah, you know, and, um, Muppet, uh, the Muppet Christmas Carol, the ghost of a, uh, is a ghost of Christmas past. Yeah, little oh, glowing yeah. Like, doll thing with you just kind of see the face. Uh, yeah, it floats along. Yeah, it's kind of yeah, it's kind of what it looked like. Yeah. I just thought she was, was so pretty, and it just and then she doesn't speak, and she doesn't really give us any emotion and. I, I just thought it was I thought it was a really neat way of uh showing her mm. for the first time. Yeah. And they keep that whole sort of like space squid motif with the ancients as well, where they mm. they're like energy tendrils and stuff, and even their weapons are kind of, you know, jellyfish like uh when mm. we get to see those later on as well. Good point. And they're the so, ones who built the Stargate, right? Yes. Or yeah, they built the Stargate network. Um yeah. Okay. So it was um, Carla Boudreau was the actress for this one. And then the one who plays the human form is Mel Harris. Mel Harris. That's right. Nice. So we'll get to see more of her, I assume. Yep, we get to see her. She's in, I don't know, how many episodes? Like, like four? A couple of times. Mostly involving a diner, if I recall correctly, but. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There is a, a long episode of her in a diner. Yeah. Yeah. A very long episode. Yeah. <laughs> because if you're an omnipotent, like energy being and can manifest, manifest yourself in any sort of surroundings, you're going to choose the, the cheapest thing to film. Going to be yep. in a diner. Yep. <laughs> Not like a 1950s. I'm just imagining like 1950s mm-hmm. kind of. Yeah, closer to up. 70s. Like a Denny's. Denny's. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of pie and coffee. Yeah. 
Yeah. Moon over my hammy. Okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Now I'm hungry. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Hey, I think oh, this is 24 7. Yeah, Grand Slam back breakfast. Yep. Yeah. Let's only go. 25 miles from here, so no. <laughs> hey, you work up an appetite while you're driving over. Exactly. <laughs> I, I did like the ending of this episode quite a bit where like Daniel realizes that the Jaffa are all going to be like, you know, Ark of the Covenanted and, and he just says, <laughs> bye. Like, yeah. and they all get yeah. like that. <laughs> I thought that was good. And then like our final, like little, like, like comic beat at the end was, uh, you know, Jack saying, Daniel shoes. And Daniel goes like, Oh, that's right. And runs back in to get his shoes and stuff. Yep. So I thought that was nice. Yeah. Did like a Jack's comment when they first walk into the temple. He's like, someone's been reading Martha Stewart. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I will say they captured uh, Jack being so witty and funny. And, and think about it, the way he handled Daniel in so many other episodes. He's just been kind of a. I don't think of a nice way to say it. He's gotten he's gotten insufferable at yeah. certain points, I feel like. And this yep. one, they did it in such a way that you weren't upset with him. You kind of understood him, but he was kind of fun at the same time. You know, that kind of stuff, but it wasn't, it wasn't ugly. Yeah. yeah. Firm, but not They ugly. did get, they did get in a Daniel, Jack. Yeah. Daniel. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I like that repartee. I like that. They have great timing with each other, don't they? Oh, yeah. As, I mean, actors, I mean, they really just have a great, just the way that they can do that. I love it. I like how this is one of the shows where you can tell that the cast all like each other mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they work, they all work really well together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't remember ever hearing, you know, like you, you hear from the original Star Trek, how <laughs> really nobody liked William Shatner and you hear from TNG that there were certain characters or actors that weren't liked. And you don't really hear stories like that from Stargate. No, no, yeah. not, not In at fact, all. In fact, usually it's the exact opposite. They have too much fun. Mm hmm. <laughs> And even now, well, when are. you see little, like the, oh, I forgot who it was, they did this the interview with um, Richard Dean Anderson and uh, Amanda Tapping popped on. You know, mm -hmm. it just, you st I mean, it's been 20 something years and you can still tell that they, you know, were friendly and enjoyed uh, working mm -hmm. together and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, definitely. So I'm going to be sad when I know, you know, later on we get some of them drop off and we get replacements. And I'm going to be sad when that happens. It is sad. It's like when you try to replace the original members of a band and it's just not the same. <laughs> Get the band back together. Yeah. I guess that would make uh, Kowalski uh, Pete Best in this situation. Could be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, did y'all have uh, any other thoughts on this episode? Um, I will say uh, that when Daniel's trying to light the candle with his mind to move stuff around, one of my kids was like, use the force. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, where do you think George Lucas got the idea? It was from this episode. That was from, sure. Yeah. He's a time traveler. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I did kind of get a chuckle where Braytac turns over the, the body of the, the, the priestess that got shot and she's been here for two days. Yeah. Boy, that body's limber for two days. <laughs> My head cannon for that is the uh, Gould symbiote will try its hardest to heal you even when you're dead. <laughs> and so rigor mortis is not able to set in because of all the enzymes that are pumping through your body. Okay. I took forensic science in law school. So I'm just going to tell you that rigor sets and then releases. So oh, does it? it does. Oh, okay. I don't remember at what time period. So it could have been, you know, but I do remember. I went to an autopsy. I remember that it sets and then releases. So. It's oh, cool. It's yeah. kind of how like when you're working out, you're very limber, <laughs> then you get really stiff and then you get really exactly. limber again. Yeah. I just feel like I'm dying when I work out. So yeah. I, that work yeah. Kind of <laughs> I was looking at her body thinking it's been there for two days. Where are the body? <laughs> yeah. That's all I was I'm like. Wow. She looks really good. Maybe they don't. They show her face though, so maybe if he rolled her all the way over, it would have been just like, eh. yeah, maggot. Yeah, <laughs> I do think the the burnt like the crispy Jaffa like props were pretty good. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I can't remember if they bring those out again, but they should have kept them, you know, because they could really reuse those props. They're they're really good. 
Oh, I remember where George Lucas got the idea for uh, Uncle Owen and Aunt Brew, too. That's true, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) One more thing. You're on a kick tonight, aren't you? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) The sky at night was really cool. That was. That was Mm -hmm. we don't we don't get a lot of that. I like in in Stargate. I liked it. It was really neat. Yeah, no, they did well with that. And then the the clouds, like the kind of the gathering storm and stuff. Yeah, that that part was really well done. The whole she was Mother Nature. Yes, that's right. Yep. I'd forgotten that that was her origin kind of story. Was that they thought she was on Earth as Mother Nature? Daniel should have turned to the camera and be like, "Listen to your mother," <laughs> like <laughs> something, yeah, <laughs> like instead of "bye." Nice. Awesome. Uh, any other uh, thoughts? Nope. All right. Uh, before we go, I'd like to invite everyone to uh, join our Discord at sqpn.com slash Discord. Uh, we're having a lot of fun over there. We have a Stargate uh, channel over there, so come and join us there. We can keep, keep this party going. <laughs> We'd like to take a moment to thank our patrons who make it possible for us to create the secrets of Stargate, including Chris P., Tim G., Ram C's, David W., and Thomas A., their generous donations at sqpn.com slash give make it possible for us to continue the secrets of Stargate and all the shows at StarQuest. You can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. Be sure to follow the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or on the SQPN YouTube channel. Find previous episodes of Secrets of Stargate and to send feedback, please visit sqpn.com slash Stargate. And you can email us at stargate at sqpn.com or follow us on StarQuest on social media at facebook.com slash starquestmedia or on Twitter at SQPN. And we'll be back next time when we'll be discussing the next episode of SG-1, Crystal Skull. Until then, Father Corey, thank you for joining me and sharing the secrets of Stargate. Thank you, Jack. And Lisa Jones, thank you as well. Thanks, Jack. And Victor Lambs, thank you too. Thanks, Jack, and don't. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, I'm Jack Berzini. Thank you for listening to the secrets of Stargate on StarQuest. I'm sorry, but that just happens to be how I feel about it. What do you think?